Hey everyone, my name is Shilun. This here is Tito and welcome to a brand new video. This will be the first video on this channel, so if you have any feedback, please let me know in the comments. Today I'm gonna show you how I built the pelodarium that's right next to me. It's 80 centimeters wide, 60 centimeters deep and 40 centimeters tall, which means it holds about 200 liters of water or about 50 gallons. Throughout this video, I'm gonna give this thing a few different names, aquarium, pelodarium, terrarium, and that's because you can use it as any of those. I decided to use this as a pelodarium, but it's completely watertight and you can totally use this as an aquarium or without any water as a terrarium. With that out of the way, I hope you enjoy the video and let's get to building. Before we can get started, I would like to go over my sketch with you guys. Essentially what we're going to build is a big wooden box consisting out of two layers. The second layer will be slightly larger than the first layer so we can join them together without overlapping the seams. We'll end up with this kind of staircase pattern along all the seams which will greatly improve the strength of the tank and will also make it less likely for the tank to leak. On the front side of the terrarium this staircase pattern will create a lip which will hold our glass in place. And on top of that we'll add a nice wooden frame to really secure it in there. Alright, let's start building. I started by measuring out and cutting all the pieces for the inner box. I'm using these big OBS boards for the bulk of the terrarium. They're really cost effective and a rough surface will be really beneficial once we start sealing the inside. Once I got those I did a quick test fit to see if everything was alright. Everything was alright so I started cutting up a few boards. I pre-drilled some holes and secured these together. Next I put some wood glue on the back panel and secured everything with some screws. Next I repeated this for the sides and the bottom of the terrarium. I decided to measure everything to make sure it was going as planned. Unfortunately, I cut a few pieces a little bit too small and the terrarium was 4mm short. This isn't really a big deal since I can just add a bit of wood to the sides, but it's good that I checked because if I had continued this could have caused problems with the glass. I cut up a few 1mm boards of MDF and added two layers of it to either side of the tank. These were secured with the smallest screws I could find. With that out of the way, it's time to cut the pieces for the outer layer. For this, I'm also using OBS board. Once finished, I'm gonna place this terrarium inside of a rack, which will cover all of the sides. So it would be pointless to use expensive plywood on the outside. However, if you're planning on recreating this, I would recommend using plywood on the outside. It looks way better than these OBS boards, especially if you stain it. Once the outer layer was attached, I sanded everything down. Next I cut up a few more boards and secured them to the top. These boards will add a lot of strength. I aligned these with the outside of the second layer. This way the outside of the tank is completely smooth but at the top and the front of the tank there has been a recessed edge. On the top this will allow me to add a screen lid and on the front side it will hold the glass in place. Now that the main structure is done it's time to waterproof this tank. For this I use liquid rubber. It's the easiest and cheapest way to waterproof something like this. And once it's cured, it's completely safe for animals. I simply applied it using a paint roller.
Once the first layer had dried, I used this seal fabric to reinforce the seams. You simply apply a little bit along the seams, press the fabric into it and apply a little more. This fabric will soak up a lot of the rubber, making the seams very strong. Next I gave the inside 4 more coats of liquid rubber. Then I cut up a few trim boards to make a frame to hold the glass in place. And now it's time to get ourselves a piece of glass. I managed to get an old aquarium for free. It was leaking so I had to take it apart anyway. But instead of resealing everything I decided to use it for projects like this. While well, I'm at it, what shall I do with the leftover pieces? I scraped off all the excess silicone and took everything outside. I lowered the glass inside the recessed edge to see how it will fit. It looked great, so I covered it with the frame and taped off the glass. Next I cleaned off the glass with some isopropyl alcohol. This will make sure that the silicone will bond properly. Talking about silicone, I used this AutoSeal S28 which is completely fish safe. I applied a thick bead of it along the recessed edge. Next I lowered the glass into place. I added another bead of silicone along the inside and smoothed it out with my finger. I added more wood glue to the exposed wooden edge and some silicone to the glass. I proceeded by pressing the wooden frame into place and securing it with a few pieces of tape and wood clamps. I added the final bead of silicone along the inside of the frame and smoothed it out with my finger. After that I removed the tape from the glass and let it sit for 24 hours. Once everything had cured I brought the tank outside and filled it up with water. After a few hours it wasn't showing any signs of leaking, so I proceeded. I emptied the tank again and painted the outside black. The paint will help seal the wood and give a more finished look to it. However, I didn't paint everything black. I taped off the boards at the top and the front of the enclosure. These will get a nice dark stain. To protect all of the wood and make sure it will stand up for a long time, I covered it in two coats of varnish. Now you could definitely stop here and use it as a terrarium of sorts, but I plan on using it as a paludarium, so I'm gonna install a few pieces of plumbing. I made three individual holes with a hole saw. Next I installed a bulkhead in each of them. The uneven surface of the OBS may cause some leaks, so to prevent that I'm siliconing these in place. I secured these 90 degree elbow hose connectors to the back of the bulkheads with some thread tape. I temporarily connected these two together so I could do a water test. I also connect the hose to the third bulkhead and clamped it over the top of the tank. Next it's time for the final water test. After letting it sit for a couple of hours there were no signs of leaking. Which means I can now empty the tank again and start scaping. But I won't show you that in this video. So for today, we're done. And there you have it. This is how I made this paludarium. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see how I'm going to skate this thing, you're going to have to subscribe because that video is going to be out in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.